Today we're talking about how to get your audio interface and your MIDI controller set up and working properly within Cakewalk by BandLab. If you guys want to learn how to do this properly, stick around after this introduction and I'll show you how to do so. What is going on everybody? I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is a channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe, and hit that notification bell to not have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about how to get your audio interface and how to get your MIDI controller set up and working within Cakewalk by BandLab. So this video is probably not going to be very long, but what I want to do is obviously I'm going to show you how to get your interface and your MIDI controller set up, but I want to show you some of the other settings that are in those same areas inside of Cakewalk and let you know which you should set and which you maybe don't need to worry about. So basically by the end of this uh, tutorial, if you're a beginner, you will have a great idea of how to actually start recording and making sure that you have all of your equipment set up properly. So with that being said, let's actually get into the audio interface setup first. All right, so for your audio interface, I cannot reiterate this enough. You need to go to your manufacturer's website. So if you have a Focusrite, you need to go to focusrite.com, register your device, and then also download any software for it because there's likely gonna be some software and potentially some control panel for it, and you're gonna need this stuff to make sure that it works right. And you also need to make sure that you have the most recent USB drivers for your interface, or if you have Thunderbolt, I think Thunderbolt also has uh, drivers for them. So make sure that is up to date. So if you have all that intact and you're ready to go, let's move on from there. So in Cakewalk here, what you wanna do is you wanna go up to your edit uh, tab at the top here where my mouse is hovering, click on edit. Down here at the very bottom, you have preferences, okay? So. There's a couple ways to look at this here. So the first menu we're gonna look at under audio here is actually gonna be your playback and recording, okay? What we need to do first is pick your driver mode. If you have a audio interface, which I hope you do if you're watching this tutorial now, you can use your built-in Windows card with also maybe like a USB microphone. There's ways to do that. I don't recommend it, but I am gonna show you that way too. But we're gonna start with if you have an audio interface. So for your driver mode, it's gonna likely be ASIO if you have an audio interface, okay? You can leave dithering on none. Okay, for use multi-processing engine, keep this checked. Leave plug-in load balancing checked. And then you can also leave the next two checked. So pretty much how I have everything set in here right now, including your stretch methods for your um, elastic audio in here, leave it all like this, okay? So I'm gonna pause for a second here, look at my screen, make sure all your settings are just like this. So next, we're actually gonna move on to our um, driver settings tab here. And what we wanna do is to make sure that for our playback timing master and recording master, we have the proper uh, ins and outs selected on our interface. Now, for your playback timing master, you may see it this way. I'm gonna do a drop down here you'll see one, three, five, seven, and nine. So this is actually stereo, okay? And that's what we want. So this one here is actually one and two. This three is actually three and four, okay? So most audio interfaces, especially if you're new to this, you're gonna wanna use outputs one and two, which is just gonna be the first option here, okay? So that's gonna be your playback timing master. Now, if you have a different interface, this might say like, Mo2 if you have a Mark of the Unicorn, okay? It's gonna be whatever your interface is here. So I have a focus right, and that is why I see it this way. Now, for your recording timing master, this here is fine. You can just leave it on uh, the very first input of your device because this is gonna actually change when we create tracks or you're gonna have the option to change it, okay? So under this here, make sure you have 64-bit double precision engine checked. This is going to be for mixing, and this is actually going to have all your plugins that can process at 64-bit actually process at 64-bit, and that's what we want, okay? Down here, this is very important, your sampling rate. I am making a video, that's why I have it 48 kilohertz here, okay? These are all your options in here, all right? If you're new, you're probably not going to have an extremely powerful computer. You're gonna to wanna to record, if you're doing music, okay, you're gonna to wanna to record at 44.1 right here. If you're making something for YouTube, make it at 48, 
and this is if you're new and don't have an extremely powerful computer. If you want to go up from there, okay, the best way to think about this is doubling it. So if I'm doing my music at 44.1, the next step for music would be 88,200. If I'm doing my film, YouTube, at 48, my next step would be 96, okay? And you have to make sure that your audio interface can actually handle the sampling range, which most can go up to 96. Actually, mine goes to 96. Now, I personally don't know any interfaces that go up to, uh, what is this, 384,000. <laughs> so I'm sure there's probably something out there by now, but uh, I haven't really been paying attention because I'm never going to be recording at that uh, sampling rate, okay? So remember, I'm just going to keep it simple. If you're recording music, do it at 40 for one. If you're recording something for film like YouTube, do it at 48, okay? All right. So the next thing, and this is why I talked about making sure that you download the software for your audio interfaces, you're gonna to want to potentially adjust your buffer size and it depends on what you're doing. If you are recording, you want your buffer size to be as low as possible, which would be over on the fast side where my mouse is, okay? If you're mixing, you want it to be on the safe side. So for me, the highest my interface goes is uh, 1,024 samples, and you can see it right there. And the faster you make the buffer size go, the more taxing it is on your computer, okay? So if you don't have a very good computer and you've recorded a bunch of tracks, so you got like 60 tracks recorded and you have plugins and stuff on them, and you're trying to maybe record a vocal track without latency, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> so um, that's something you gotta think about. So if I click the ASIO panel here, it's gonna launch my Focusrite um, control panel. So I'm gonna do that and let you see what it looks like. All right, so this is my little control panel for my Focusrite here. So if you're going to change your buffer size, you saw that we had a fader within there. Um, I actually can't bring Cakewalk in this up at the same time for whatever reason. Uh, I recommend that you change your buffer size in here. So if I click here, I recommend that you choose one of these. So remember, if you want to have less latency when you're like performing, if you're singing, you're gonna to wanna to maybe bring this down to, you know, if you can get down to 192, that's awesome. Um, I know that some people that don't have great computers might have to do it around 256 or 512. It's kind of hard to sing at 512 because what happens is when you say the word, it's like a split second back that you hear it in your headphones. That's what latency is, okay? So just keep that in mind. So let's get back in the cakewalk. Okay, so back in Cakewalk here. So I'm just gonna leave this to 1024 right now since we're not actually gonna be recording anything. So after you're out of this section here, you wanna go to devices, all right? And now you could go to devices first if you want. It doesn't really matter because after you select your interface, these are likely gonna automatically be checked. So in here for my focus right, I have mics one, three, five, and seven. That's basically stereo inputs checked right here, which makes them available for me to choose when I record. That's input drivers. So these are gonna be inputs on your audio interface. And for your output drivers here, same concept. I basically have one, three, five, seven, and nine selected. So if you're not gonna use any of these, you can deselect them. You know, it doesn't hurt you to have them selected or deselected. You just gotta make sure you have your, obviously for output drivers, you gotta make sure that you have whatever your speakers are coming out of active, which again is likely gonna be outputs one and two. So make sure that you have the mod one here selected. All right, so that is everything you need to know to get your audio interface up and running with Cakewalk. But as promised, let me show you quickly how to use your internal sound card and maybe like a USB microphone. So only thing you have to do is go to your playback and recording, change ASIO here from driver mode to WDM slash KS. So after you do that, it's gonna read in all the inputs. Now I can't do that while I'm recording this, so I'm not gonna show you that. But once it reads in all of your inputs, both physical and virtual, Go back to your uh, driver, or sorry, device settings here, and you're gonna actually see your USB microphone in your inputs, and you'll see your computer outputs in your output drivers, okay? So all you have to do at that point is just check what you wanna use, and then you're all good to go. So before we move on to actually setting up your MIDI controller, what you wanna do here is hit apply to make sure everything saves, hit close. I just wanna show you a track here. So here's an audio track I created. So if you don't know how to create an audio track, simply right click here in this open area where my mouse is and go to insert audio track, okay? And it's gonna create that. So for your eye here, do you see this here where it says none? This is where you select your input. So if my microphone is plugged into input one on my audio interface, I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna to go to my interface, which is the Focusrite USB ASIO. And I'm gonna go over to 
left mic one. Okay, they treat this as stereo. So left is mic one, right is actually mic two. Okay, if you're looking at your interface that way. I know it may be confusing if you're new to this, but you know, if you have eight inputs on your interface, they'll have to be accounted for in here. So uh, mic input one is going to be this left one here, okay? So at this point now, I am ready to record my microphone plugged into input one. And I can also hear it back when I play it back because I have my master selected here. And you'll see when I go down here that it's actually taking what we set up in our preferences, which is outputs one and two. So it's all ready to go. So when we record our audio, we press play, we're gonna hear it back, we're all good to go for audio right now, okay? So if you guys have any more questions on how to get your audio interface set up properly or anything's related to recording of audio, uh, leave a comment in the section below. So now we're gonna move on to getting your MIDI controller set up. All right, so MIDI controller setup. So this section is gonna go by much faster than the audio interface section. So just like your audio interface, if you happen to have a USB MIDI controller, you wanna make sure that your USB driver is up to date, okay? So the first thing we wanna do, just like for the audio interface setup, we wanna go up to the edit tab at the top. We wanna to go down to preferences. And in our preferences window here, we wanna go down to MIDI and then devices. And all you have to do is simply check your MIDI device in here. And you don't have to check it for the output section. You simply just have to check it for the input section because Cakewalk wants to receive the presses from your keyboard over MIDI, okay? We don't need to send back the MIDI to your keyboard. We don't need to do that, so we don't need to really worry about the output side of things. So if you don't have a USB MIDI controller and you happen to have old school MIDI cables like myself with a older keyboard, I actually have them plugged into my audio interface, which has MIDI ins and outs on it. So as you can see, my MIDI um, device is actually my focus right USB, okay? So that's what I have checked here. So after you check um, your MIDI devices here, simply hit apply and then hit close here. And the way you wanna test this is you wanna go over to this little uh, button right here. If you hover over it, it says insert virtual instruments, click this. And then choose any of your instruments in here. So I'm gonna to go to sampler and I'm going to uh, put my originals firewood piano in here. So I'm just gonna drag it over here and let go. All this stuff here, just leave as is, hit okay. And then we'll give the second to load. All right, so you're not gonna be able to hear this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to press on my uh, MIDI keyboard and you're gonna see the meters go up and down. And that's proof that my controller is properly triggering inside of Cakewalk. All right, so as you can see, my keyboard was triggering the meters right here, which means our keyboard is properly talking to Cakewalk and we're all good to go. So none of the other settings over here, like Omni and stuff like this, none of it matters. Your keyboard for the most part is going to be plug and play once you have your MIDI devices properly selected, okay? so. That is all it takes to get your audio interface and your MIDI controller working inside of Cakewalk by BandLab. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys like Cakewalk, I have a playlist popping up in the top right now with all kinds of good training uh, to learn the ins and out of Cakewalk. All right, it's a living and breathing playlist that I'm building up and I'm gonna keep adding videos to it, all right? So uh, if you guys have time, check it out after this video. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.